Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Before we begin today's session, we are all aware of the spike in the, report, in the reported COVID-19 cases around the world. As of the 25th of May, 2021, the total amount of reported deaths are 55,874, with an average of 72 people passing on per day. Domiso Patrick Charger, the Eastern Cape High Court, the Honorable Jackson Tembu from Parliament, and naturally to name a few, the daughter of the fathers of this nation, Zinzi Mandela. We have all lost colleagues, friends and family due to this pandemic. On behalf of the South African Bar Association, we'd like to show our appreciation to the government, the frontline workers, Zakra Dudia, Reisa Kachalia, and their medical colleagues who have dedicated their time and lives in assisting and fighting this pandemic, we will prevail. However, we cannot forget about those of whom we have lost and are currently suffering from this pandemic. And accordingly, I would like to take this opportunity to afford a short, I would like to take this opportunity for a short silence for a short prayer and meditation. Thank you. It brings the South African Bar Association great pleasure in hosting this in hosting Sebwell, which is the South African Black Woman in Law. Sebwell is a consciousness movement born on the 14th of April 2016. We have the privilege and honor of hosting two speakers from Sebwell. The first being the inaugural president and current COO of Sebwell, Madilo Mofoken. Madilo's activism started while she was still a student and continues. Madilo was a deputy chair of the university's SRC and the former branch secretary at the Tswane Black Lawyers Association. In lieu of such, in November 28 of 2018, she was elected as the president of Sebwell. The second speaker is the founder and CEO of Sebwell, that's advocate Aisha Tiri, whom I, had a dis whom I have a distinct pleasure of knowing and working very closely with. Aisha has been an, adv an advocate since 2000. She is versed in multiple substantive law areas including intellectual property, commercial, medical, labor, constitutional, and technology law. Prior to being an advocate, Aisha was a judge's registrar in the South Gauteng High Court of South Africa. The topic of this presentation is, as you are well aware, a controversial topic. The challenges and, com and, com com and solutions for South African Black women in law. I spend a lot of time with Aisha on this topic, and we have themed this topic around that of around a statement of Solomon Matlango, who was a, a famous freedom flight fighter within the Republic of South Africa. I draw your attention to a famous quote of Solomon Matlango, which reads as follows: Tell my people that I love them and that they must continue the struggle. My blood will nourish the the, the tree that will bear the fruits of freedom. This collaborative effort between the South African Bar Association and Sebwell is to keep that fruit, the, the, the blood of Solomon Matlango flowing. The transformation and empowerment of South African Black women is indeed a touchy topic to many women within South Africa, especially within the legal sphere. However, if it is not dealt with now, when will it ever be dealt with? Women, black women, has and still are silenced and oppressed within the legal sphere out of fear. For far too long have people been afraid to express themselves as free and as robustly as they need to. You will realize that the, Constitu that, that the Constitutional Court has just delivered a recent judgment about the fundamental importance of freedom of expression. That's the EFF judgment. Accordingly, people are not going to be allowed to manipulate us and force us to toe their line and think the way 
they want us to think. Racism, unfortunately, still exists. And I believe that those that are part of, of racism in any way should be dealt with. Freedom of women, black women in this country is a core of the South African Bar Association's beliefs. And without any further ado, I would like to hand it over to Matilo and thereafter to Aisha. Matilo. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Matilo. I don't know if you want, to, want me to also um, have my video on. Please, that would be good. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. I'm sure you're able to see me now. We are. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to take this time to thank, to thank the South African Bar Association for inviting us uh, to have this discussion. It is indeed such an honor. Um, and we, we are very thankful for this opportunity. Before I can start, um, I would like to uh, give a short presentation on Sebel's ethos because I believe that they are very important and relevant to, this, to our discussion today as well. Sebel is an international conscious movement. We celebrate South Africa, we celebrate Blacks, we celebrate women, and we celebrate law. We have been founded, we are founded upon dignity, equality, and freedom infused, infused in the philosophies of Ubuntu and Zenzele. Respect is very integral to our core. It is very integral in how we deal with the members of the public. It is integral in how we deal with our alumni. It is very integral in how we deal with our luminaries and every single person or rather uh, aspiring legal practitioners that want to join several at large. Today's topic is very, very sensitive, but as Ahmed has mentioned, it's a topic that is very much needed. Although it's a topic that is very common, we find ourselves that most of the time discussions are held about this topic, but we see that indeed transformation in the legal profession is still taking place in a very, very slow pace. The challenges that women are facing in the legal profession are very broad, they are very deep. And I believe that these challenges, they emanate from the challenges that women face generally in society and generally abroad globally. Women are facing challenges, whether it is in corporate, whether it is in agriculture, whether it is in sport, you know it women are facing challenges out there. However, one would be surprised or rather be shocked that a profession of this nature, the legal... Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought maybe someone was saying I must raise my... I saw a, a message in the chat. I'll just up my sound so that I am audible in case that... The... It is surprising, it is surprising that um, the legal profession, one would expect that we would have a very, very low number in terms of sexual harassment, but you find that the legal profession on its own, it's actually leading in terms of the statistics. South Africa ranks amongst the worst in the world. This is highlighted by an article in the Business Insider. The article continues to also say that 43% of the women and 12% say they have been the target of sexual harassment, putting South Africa well above the global average. In the very same article, another, an advocate describes sexual harassment in the legal profession as a solid wall, pardon me, as not a, a glass ceiling 
but rather a solid wall in the legal profession in South Africa, which is quite alarming. Secondly, one of the challenges that women face in the profession, which I find rather to be typical, is the challenge of being a mother. I mean, one would wonder and sit, why would uh, being a mother become a challenge or rather a barrier in the legal profession? On the 16th of April, 2021, the broadcasting channel Newsroom Africa had an interview with four legal, with four female legal practitioners as panelists regarding race and gender within the legal profession. One of the panelists said that most female practitioners, especially mothers, leave the profession to leave the profession or they, or they, or they either become uh, sole proprietors so that they're able to manage their time due to the challenges that mothers face in the profession. I mean, I, I was watching the interview and I mean, after, what, after hearing this, I was, I was alarmed because I am a candidate attorney. I have just joined the legal profession and this is the profession that I love. And to hear this as a mother, it was quite alarming. I've heard stories from some of candidate attorneys before they were seeking their articles to say that, you know what, during the interview, one of the questions that I received was, um, do you have any kids? Do you have a child? Do you have any kids? Do you have a child? And this is quite alarming to think that a, a potential candidate attorney is being asked such a question while we know very well that their, their, their male counterpart can never be asked such a question. There is absolutely no way that the, 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 the potential male CA could be asked such a question. So now one would wonder, I mean, we are talking about a woman here by virtue of being a woman by creation, besides the choice of the choice of uh, not having kids and um, another very unfortunate, which is fertility. When we exclude those, women will have kids, women are created to have kids. So now if these are the kind of questions that potential candidate attorneys are being asked when they're seeking, seeking for articles rather, it's very alarming because this again becomes a barrier into the profession itself. This becomes a barrier in the profession that is already having challenges. It means that if I go on an interview with my male counterpart and it's just the two of us and I'm asked such a question because I am a mother, I would not get the job. My male counterpart will definitely get, get the job because this is a question that will be mostly directed to females and not males. Another challenge that I also like to highlight that women are facing in the legal profession, a challenge that we all know of is the receiving of briefs by advocates. But this is the challenge that I would leave to my colleague and the founder of CEO because she is an advocate. So she is very uh, well equipped in terms of this topic. With all the challenges that women are facing in, in the legal profession and the challenges that women are facing at large, I think we also need to acknowledge as well that although transformation is taking place at a very, very slow pace, there is transformation and it is there in the profession. First of all, by recognizing that our current Chief Justice, Justice Sisi Gampepe is a female. Our President of the Supreme Court of Appeal, President Mandisa Maya is also a female. Also recognizing that the, the Judicial Service Commission has recommended the appointment of three women out of five to the Supreme Court, the same court that has been led by President Maya. Although recently as well, we, 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 we saw that only two 
female practitioners were recommended for the Gauteng High Court out of six. So this is not even half of the number that of the judges were being appointed. Um, now I'd like to give a hand over to, to, to the CEO and founder of, of CEPOL, Advocate Aisha Tayuri. She will, she will go deeper into the discussion. She will focus on the constitution. She will co focus on the code of conduct and other legislations uh, that deal with this topic at large. Thank you. Thank you, Matilda. Advocate Aisha. How are you? It's really lovely to be with everyone today. I am, I can see um, Ahmed's picture. So I'm just testing whether you can see me on the video. Ahmed? We can see you. We can see you. We can see you. Okay. Because I can see you and I don't see it. Well, Thank you so much to the South African Bar Association for inviting us and providing us with this opportunity to raise consciousness about something that, that, that is endemic, that is systemic, and that we cannot stand back and just allow and tolerate. We need to constantly push the paradigm and we need to ensure that all of us are infused and breathe and feel that we are the respected human, that we all have dignity, equality, and freedoms as envis envisaged in the constitution. Ahmed, I can I still only see you, so I'm not too um, sure. Do you wanna then rather put my, my screens up because I only see your picture. So, so it doesn't really give me a very good, Aisha, um, everyone else can, can see you and they can see you perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I can't, it, it just feels so disconnected. Um, so I'll be speaking to you, Ahmed, because that's the only picture I can see. So what I'd like to say is that the way that I've decided to, to, to have this discussion today is by focusing on constitutional values. And then... And, and the founding values of the constitution and the founding values of several. Then I will deal with consciousness. And as Ahmed has already indicated, we've, we've, we've relied on and we, we're standing on the mammoth giant of Solomon Mashlango. And we've we, we're remembering his blood and his love as we, we are collaborating today with the South African Bar Association as several in South African Bar Association collaborates. So Sol Solomon Mashlangu is truly the bedrock and, and what he has is his words, his suffering, his pain is really what is the momentum that pushes me forward in a, in a personal capacity. And it was what pushes me um, to propel and drive several forward, to come forward to Saba and to collaborate in these occasions. I think many of us would say, you know, year after year, we are having this conversation, what's being done, are, they, are we moving forward? So I would like to commend those that still come and join us in this podium, because as much as we feel that, um, it's still necessary. That fight, that struggle, we, we need to continue that struggle. So I don't think that we are anywhere close to say that women um, are equal players in where we need to be. Um, we are far from where we need to be and the environment, uh, is quite oppressive. Um, questions are being asked that shouldn't be asked. Conduct is, is perpetuated that shouldn't be there. I, for one, am very pleased that we now have the Legal Practice Council to rely, rely upon and the Legal Practice Act 
So during our discourse, um, our COO Madillo will highlight the relevant sections. Um, there are many that are important, but we'll highlight what's topical to this discourse today. And then I'll also talk after, after we've highlighted about that, about the fit and proper. Advocates, attorneys, legal practitioners need to be fit and proper. And then we'll just tie it all up with the solutions. So if you look at, perhaps this is an apposite moment, um, Advocate Amit, for us to just quickly have a look at the, the, the second slide. So this, um, I think the third slide, right. So if you have a look in the corner on the left, so what we've done is the founding values of the constitution are encapsulated in section one there. So the constitution is really founded on dignity, the advancement of human rights and freedoms and the achievement of equality. The rule of law, we all know constitutional supremacy, non-racism, non-sexism, and um, universal adult suffrage. But I'd like us to focus on dignity, equality, and freedoms. So what we've done with Sabwell, we've said we take these values and we infuse them in Ubuntu and Zinzele. So throughout, we are always conscious of Ubuntu which is really, you know, one plus one equals 11. It means that together we are more. It is synergy. It is humanity. And then what we take, we've taken it a step further and we said Zinzele. So Vuku Zinzele comes from Soweto. Uh, it means stand up and do it for yourself. And when I say stand up and do it for yourself, you know, in African culture, there isn't an I, so it means we stand up and do it for all of us. It's not only for me individually, but when I do it for myself, I'm doing it for everybody. So, so what I want us to, to remember about this founding values, founding values are, your home has founding values. So these are the founding, the dignity, quality, freedoms, the section one is the founding values of the constitution. It is the founding values of South Africa. We're not yet ready for that slide, Ahmed. If you can move to the earlier slide. Yes. So we are, so we are, the country has values. Now I'm not yet, we're not yet in the Bill of Rights. We're just in what is important. What are the values to, to us as South Africans? And for us, it is the advancement of of freedoms, the dignity, the achievement of equality, so the advancement of human rights and freedoms. So what that says to us and what we know is that this constitution is a transformative one. So it's not something that should just be sitting idly in, in, a, in a book. It, is, it, is, it should be a living document. So we should, re, we should be living this. So what we did, because I'm a practitioner since 2000, um, or I'm admitted as an advocate in 2000. So I'm very well aware of what the systemic issues are. I'm well aware of what the problems are. But then, and, and just to, to a slight prediction, we were founded uh, on the 14th of February, 2016, not April. But what, what, I sat and I deliberated, you know, because we don't want to just complain, complain. We need to now apply Zinzele. What are the solutions? Now, many other movements, many other individuals will have their own solutions. And, I, and, and the more solutions we have from everybody, the better, because there is no one solution. There's, there's different options. So what I can share with you is that we a consciousness movement because consciousness takes me right back to Solomon Mashlango. And if at this juncture, Ahmed, I could just ask you for us to put up um, uh, iconic Mashlango's words. So if you think about consciousness, I would want us, whether we are those that 
can provide opportunities or whether we are those that, can, that require opportunities. I cannot separate consciousness from these words. Tell my people that I love them and they must continue the struggle. My blood will nourish the trees that will bear the fruits of freedom. Aluta continua. Now, I mean, I'm, I, I'm okay if you want to stop screen sharing and have, have sight of me and we'll revert back to the documents. So I can see myself in, in, in your screen. So perhaps that's a bit better than earlier than looking at a, well, now I'm back at, yeah. So what I'd like to say is that what did, what did, what did Solomon Mashlango say? He, he really said, you know, he had love. Tell my people that I love them. And for me, that's Ubuntu. That is just, you know, it, it is that, that there is this caring, this, there's that humanity. And we need to remember that the suffering of, of iconic Mashlango was before the birth of the constitution. It, it, they, were, they paved the way for the freedoms that we have today, for all the freedoms that we are striving for today. And let my blood nourish the tree that will bear the fruits of freedom. Now, what does that mean? Every woman that is oppressed, every woman, every black person, every gender discriminated individual that is oppressed by unlawful discrimination. There's blood, there's pain, there is suffering. You know that pain, I know that pain. We know what it is to experience systemic oppression, to be in privileged structures that are created for, for a different person, a different a person that doesn't share your attributes, and where we need to fit into that and oppress parts of ourselves to even be given an okay that you can be in this little environment. So there is blood. So Solomon Mashlangu was murdered. We, he, he's not here today. And I would say that when we experience that pain, that suffering, I draw on that, that quote, I draw on his words. And what did he say to do with his blood? He said, let my blood nourish the tree that bears the, the fruits of freedom. Now, if you take that, and you hear, he said, let his suffering, and, and that goes to us, that goes to me, that goes to you, that goes to the woman that's been sexually harassed, that goes to the, the woman that is not getting a brief because she's a woman, that goes to the mother that is not getting the job because she's a mother, that goes to, to you, know, you know, the black man that is not getting equality, dignity, and freedoms that is our right that is ours as prescribed simply because we are human. And if we are suffering based on our humanity, I would say that what I am doing and or what I aspire to do is really to actualize and lead what iconic Mashlango has said we must do. Use that pain, that blood, that suffering and allow it to nourish a tree. And a tree bears fruits of freedom. So plant and, and use whatever we have, whatever, however we've been accosted. I would say allow that energy to propel into something positive so that we can fight back. Because what did, how did he end? We must continue the struggle. So for me, I, I really resonate deeply with those words. That's why um, the Saba and Sabal collaboration has, is, is so bounded by, by that because the conduct of Saba by creating opportunities, by allowing us all, regardless, 
to access platforms, to access each other without the barriers, without the, um, the, the, the prescriptions of needing to fit certain protocols and only be allowed access if you pass um, systemic uh, measures that, that, have, that are there. So I would really say that I, 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 would, I would then want to share that with you. You might, you might find pearls from other, the other activists, but for me, that's actually, you know, the, the gold, that's the nugget. And that is really what Sabo is. So I've taken the pain, the suffering, and really, it has become such a beautiful thing because we've, we've blossomed. And I think Saba is doing exactly that. So the South African Bar Association is also saying, look, we see the systemic problems. We see what the issues are. What can we do to, to have this beautiful tree that blossoms fruits of freedom? So what I'm saying is we don't have the answers. We are relying on our stalwarts that come before us. I can tell you, I, I really look to, to our, our history. Our, I look to our ancestors. I look to those that have gone through the struggle, like, like Subukwe, when I was on Robben Island. I mean, people who didn't communicate, uh, Sabuka was so powerful, they, they did not want anyone to speak to him because they were afraid that he could galvanize masses and overthrow people in this Robben Island. You know, they were scared of Sabuka, even though he was in Robben Island, isolated, and no one could see him. But the way that people communicated with him, his other comrades, is, is, is they picked up the sand and they let the sand flow through their fingers. And that was how they greeted him. But I mean, can you think, he, he was so isolated. And when I was on that bus to, on Robben Island, I was like, you know, the, the, the commentator was, was saying things and I thought this was quite obvious. And she said, stand up, look around. Not one person in the bus knew who Subukwe was. So what I'm sharing with you is that we, as several, we are consciousness movement. And it may seem that us gathering here in these environments, it's, it's being said over and over, but I, I think that we need to constantly work towards conscientizing what the issues are. Because the privileged individual, the one that comes with, with everything, doesn't actually truly understand. They, they have not suffered. They do not their suffering may be something different, but systemic oppression is, 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 a, is a special form of oppression because what it does is, is it says, Advocate Aisha, you are welcome in my environment as long as you behave in this particular way. But they tell everybody that, you know, Advocate Aisha, we want you. We want people that are women. We, we want you. But the minute I, and, and please tell us what can we do to make it better? So what I would go and do, and this is now obviously a, a, a figurative example, is I would say, you know, all these chairs are so high. I'm quite tiny. I, my feet can't touch the ground. I would like a chair to actually, you, you know, so my feet can touch the ground because I'm working such long hours and my my back is aching and I, I am uncomfortable. My productivity is decreased. And because for generations, thousands and thousands or however long that systemic structure has been there, everybody is affronted. How can we change this chain? How can we change the structure? So, and then all your others that are like you, that are also suffering like you quietly in that little chair, look at you because how could you speak up? Because you know you're going to be in trouble because they haven't said anything. So, because they know that if you say something, you ousted, you out. So that's what is my very, you know, nonchalant um, example of systemic oppression. It takes many other forms. 
but you would have the mass retaliation against you on the basis that you cannot, uh, you, you, why are you changing things? So the, the bulk would then oppress your, your voice. And then what happens? Because we are strong, we would then think, you know, why do I need to put up with this? Let's just move and, and be healthier and have dignity and create something different. So for me, as much as there are, and there always will be challenges when things are new and novel, I, I definitely am a strong supporter of the Legal Practice Council, the Legal Practice Act, because as an advocate, I have much more choice. So I have, uh, and I love um, new solutions, new proposals, because it doesn't mean the one way is the right way for everybody. It means, it simply means there's choice. So I'm not saying if I applaud the, the Saba that, that everything else is bad. It just simply means that this is something that is fantastic and can speak to a, to a lot of advocates and um, practicing advocates or those that are aligned to it. Perhaps it speaks to attorneys that want to brief advocates that are with Saba. But all I am saying is that every person that has suffered, that has felt that blood, that pain, Remember the love of Subukwe. Remember the love of humanity. Remember all of those that fought so that we have it constitutionalized, that we have the founding values of dignity, equality, and freedoms. Yes, there are rights. We have Section 10 is the right to human dignity. It's the heart of the Bill of Rights. We have Section 9, which is the right to equality. You have section 16, which is your freedom rights. So you have all your individual rights. But I've taken it to ground roots, which is your values. And then what I want to say is that from my, from, from our movement, our consciousness movement as SABO, we, we take that and we really, every measure, whatever we do, it's, it's married to Ubuntu. And it is also infused in Zinzele. Zinzele is so vital because Zinzele says, stand up and do it yourself. So we don't sit around and wait for handouts. It is so empowering, Zinzele. And people don't, don't remember enough what Zinzele did to overthrow apartheid. Those women used to bake the fed cooks. They used to have the little notes. And when, when people bought it, they used to share the notes and while they were giving the fed cook, so this is how they communicated. And that is how women sustained families. So Zinzeli is very strong in the women's movement. And it does resonate with me. So, so, so I, I also am very passionate that Ubuntu should be expressly included in our constitution. Ubuntu was mentioned in the interim constitution expressly and not in the final constitution. Thankfully, the constitutional court justices who protect and guard the sanctity of the constitution, they ensured that Ubuntu is part of our law. So we know that through a constitutional court judgment. But I will push even further and say that Ubuntu should why isn't it expressly in the constitution? We now know it's part of our law. I would even go further and call for Zinzele, but I think you know we still first need to work on Ubuntu. But those are, those are our values because we, we do it for ourselves. We don't wait for handouts. Um, it's, it's disempowering to allow others to, to simply think others can save us. I, it, it's not gonna happen. So use that pain and use that think uh, because women blacks we know that systemic suffering i i know it you know it uh, uh, people might want to say look it's over and done with um this is in the past i i hope i i wish it was that way i don't believe that but maybe for some people until uh, they stop playing the game and until they or not playing the game, but until they realize, you know what, I want to chair that fits my body, until I want what works for me in this environment, and they shake, 
shaken up a little bit. If that, if there are those structures that are allowing those changes, then well done to those structures. But from what, from my studies, I've read extensively. I've read Harvard reviews on on studies on transformation. It says, and and you can do your own studies. Uh, what I'm sharing on my submissions that historical structures they've they've done it so many times they go and they try and restructure they try and reform they send breakaway groups they train in that breakaway groups come back and then it just reverts to the old structure so it hasn't worked so so I what I've done is uh, uh, or what we are trying to do is we're really trying to to work from the mistakes of others and several has been working for us. So if something else works for you, I respect it. As our COO has shared with you, respect is really very important to us. Respect means that I may not understand what you are doing. I may not agree with what you are doing, but you are free to your own path. So that is why I say I support choice. So if there's another opportunity, so, so if Saba pre presents more opportunities, if Sabo presents opportunities, if other bars present opportunities, wow, fantastic. Because maybe not everybody, um, there, there's no one way for, for each soul. So everyone has their own particular trajectory. And what I want to say is let's go back to the slide because I think I've covered section one, which is the one little dimension. Let me talk about the Sabol equation, which is the same slide, right? Now, if you look at the bottom, yes, the Sabol equation. Now, what I've said uh, is that consciousness equals opportunities, equals dignity plus equality and freedoms. And that takes us to the respected human. Now, I've highlighted consciousness. Consciousness, I, I cannot do it better than, than what Solomon Machlango has said. So if I tell you consciousness, consciousness is a really being that aware that we need, we, we know what, what the systemic issues are. We know what the struggles are. We know how we are fighting to be heard. So consciousness really is where either I use the blood to plant the tree to nourish the fruits of freedom, or I have reached the stage where I am in that position to provide others with opportunities. So consciousness can work on very different dimensions. It can mean that I'm conscious of the systemic problems. And as a privileged individual, I would like to, to, to help dismantle those barriers so I can be conscious and, and help ensure that the environment is healthy for everyone to flourish, not only those that are of a certain kind. And also consciousness with Zenzele and Ubuntu truly leaves the person that is being oppressed empowered because we don't wait for solutions. We discuss, we, we collaborate, we share, and we jointly come up with proposals and we try. Now, why I, I said consciousness takes us to opportunities. So either others are creating opportunities or we are creating our own opportunities. But what is essential is that opportunities are needed. And because there are many of us, I think you can, you can take it back to me because we've looked at the slides. So, so we can, so, so consciousness equals opportunities. Now opportunities, I, it is very important to, to think about this. If you have consciousness, whatever you are doing, you are going to think, how do I capitalize? How do I, uh, how can we create more opportunities out of this? You're not after the fact going to be told, oh my word, the whole court only had male advocates. And then as an afterthought, oh wow, really? I didn't realize it. So what does that tell you about where you are in your consciousness? 
about what needs to be done. So consciousness means truly that you are living the constitution. You are aware of Solomon Mishlango's blood that has spilt and that blood must bear the trees that nourishes the fruits of freedom. Because if that is not happening, if that is not part of your blood, if that is not who you are, then you truly, I don't believe that, that you, you can actualize the constitution. It may be a document and you can have the theory on it, but you are not a stalwart on the constitution. You are not somebody that can authoritatively speak because all you can talk about is what the written document says and what the words are to back it up. But the truth is truly the suffering of Mashlangu and the others like him. I've taken, he is, the, he is the theme that binds us today, but there are others that have suffered. There are so, so many that have spilt blood. And if you understand that, then you will know that whatever is necessary to dismantle historical apartheid structures, it must be done. Whatever can be done to, to ensure that we have dignity, equality, and freedoms, it must be done. Now, what is very important is there are so many of us that need opportunities. So, so many. And in the current environment, there are too few opportunities. So what happens is, we all may have one opportunity in our lifetime. What does that do? That one opportunity does not equal dignity, equality, and freedoms. That one opportunity doesn't take us to the respected human. That one opportunity is, is a learning curve. So what happens is we all get a learning curve, and then, the, then we are viewed by the systemic players that want to retain their structures. And it is stated that, oh, well, we knew they would fail. Because what happens when you, when you have one opportunity? It is a learning curve. Now, what, how do you become an expert? An expert, it's written, it's, the studies on it needs thousands of hours. You need thousands of hours to become an expert. So what does that mean? It means we need opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. We don't want opportunities where the person sit back and want us to fail. And then when it is persons of their own kind, then they are forgiving. It is, there are studies on it. There was a CV that was um, an application that was done, and then they pretended it was a, um, a, a particular person, and then he was forgiven. When it was, the, when it was pretended to be someone else, he was not forgiven. So what I'm trying to say is that needs to break. That is unacceptable, and that is what we are fighting against. That's the struggle. So the systemic oppression, because we know what the law is. Now, when Solomon Mashlango and his comrades and, and our forefathers, those that paved the, paved the way for us to have dignity and quality and freedom, when they were there, the difference between them and us is the law was against them. They had apartheid, which was the rule of law. Section one now, founding value is the rule of law. But today, the founding values is the advancement of human rights and freedoms, the achievement of equality and dignity. So yes, the rule of law, constitutional supremacy, adult human suffrage, non-racism, non-sexism, but there, that is a huge difference. So don't forget that the law is there and that is what we've been fighting for. And now it does help. I do believe, I, I'm a practitioner, so I, I truly, it, I mean, I believe in the judgments, I believe in our courts, and I, I have experienced the, the, the goodness of the law, so I don't expect the law to always find, um, to be kind or to be generous, but I do expect it to reach the closest to justice, and I do, and I, and I applaud the Constitutional Court, for recognizing that Ubuntu is part of our law, that came from the Constitutional Court. It did not come 
from the constitutional court document itself. It, didn't, it wasn't written, so even negotiated that document, took it out. It was in the interim constitution. I wasn't there. I don't know where we went there, but they took it out. So I do say thank you to the constitutional court justices because they adjudicated and it is through the constitutional court judgments that I can say authoritatively that Ubuntu is part of our league. So I, I, I don't see why it isn't part of the final text right now, but that's up to parliament and the activists and the politicians. At least it's part of the law. I'm a lawyer, so I know it is part of our law. So consciousness equals opportunities, and that's opportunities with a capital S and many, many S's. So please always remember and understand if you are given that one opportunity and you make a mistake, it's fine. It's okay because we are human beings. Nobody is born an expert. No one is born knowing everything. I have to tell you, you know, words that touched me um, was uh, by the, I think it was the chair of, um, former chair of uh, Exato, and he said, you come into the, to the world with a closed fist. But make sure when you go, you open your fist. So it was so powerful. It, it was really so powerful because that was so affirming to humanity. Um, he, in other words, everybody has something to contribute. And the way that we are trained is that you start out with nothing and that this, that, that it is only later that you have something to give after you have been trained. So I would say, let's challenge that because you have humanity. And like I told you, Solomon Mashlangu for me is more authoritative on what human rights is than a person that can speak authoritatively on the text and the judgment. So to me, that quote is more powerful than anybody that will give you opinion after opinion after opinion on, on legal text. And I would say to you, do not be afraid to bring your humanity, your Ubuntu into your learnings, because that is how we will sh shatter structures, especially in training. So it is your, your right to question and challenge everything. And then the court makes the decision. Once it's a judgment, we must abide. You know, it can be overturned, but the consciousness equals opportunities, and with the capital S takes us into that expert status. And if you are in that, you have more choice. And when you have choice, you would have self-actualized, and I, I call the self-actualized person the respected human. So if I can, then let's just have a look at that slide. I want to see if I've covered everything on that slide, Amit. So we had a slide called consciousness equals opportunities equal dignity, quality, and freedoms and the respected human. So that's fine. Let me see what we have in store on the next slide. Let's take this opportunity to invite our chief operating officer, uh, Madila Morfuking, to conscientize us on what the Legal Practice Act code of conduct prescribes for us. Um, COO, can I call upon you to assist us here? Thank you, Madam CEO. So it reads as, as follows, the code of conduct. Legal practitioners, candidate legal practitioners and juristic entities shall, one, maintain the highest standards of honesty and integrity, two, uphold the constitution of the Republic and the principles and values enshrined in the constitution and without limiting the, gener the generality of these principles and values shall not in the course of his or her or its practice or business activities discriminate against any person on any grounds prohibited in the constitution. Four, behave towards their colleagues whether in private practice or otherwise, including any legal practitioner 
from a foreign juristic from a foreign pardon me from a foreign jurisdiction and towards members of the public with integrity fairness and respect and without unfair discrimination and shall avoid any behavior which is insulting or demeaning Thank you. Can we move to the next slide as well? And then, uh, Madam COO, I think we can, can continue on this. No legal practitioner or candidate legal practitioner may subject any person to sexual harassment. No legal practitioner or candidate legal practitioner may subject any person to harassment, including sexual harassment. Sexual harassment is unwanted conduct of a sexual nature or other unwelcome conduct based on the gender or sexual orientation of a person, which has the purpose or effect of violating a person's rights or creating an, un an uncomfortable, degrading, humil hum humi pardon me, humiliating or hostile environment or has the effect of violating a person's dignity. Harassment is unwanted conduct which is persistent or serious and demeans, humiliates or creates a hostile or intimidating environment or is calculated to induce submission by actual or threatened adverse consequences and which is related to essence membership or presumed membership of a group identified by one or more of the constitu constitutionality prohibited discriminatory grounds or a characteristic associated with such, with such group. Now conduct may take the form of non-verbal conduct, verbal conduct, and or physical conduct. Conduct qualifying as sexual harassment may occur in a single instance or may include conduct that occurs on a repeated basis where the effect is to sexually harass the person. Thank you so much, Madam um, COO, uh, Ms. Mufuking. I, appreci I appreciate that. Why we, we decided to take the time to read that carefully, to have it on our screens, is really because it, it's part of conscientizing how serious this all is, and also applauding the code of conduct of the Legal Practice Council for ensuring that this is clear, clear in documents that bind us as legal practitioners. So we know that if there is a problem, like I said, our stalwart Mashlangu didn't have the law on his side. We, if we are, believe that there is systemic oppression, if there's discrimination, if there's racism, if there's sexism, we must look to what our protectors are. We can then know that the law is there. Now, the, the problem that we really have a lot is that sometimes no one relies on it. They perhaps don't, um, there's reasons. They, they don't want to take it forward. And um, those are different challenges. At least we now know that there will be, if, there's a, if there is a body appointed, it's appointed in terms of the Legal Practice Act. And I would, like us to, I would like to take what we've presented now as a foundation, a step forward. And through that, can I have the next slide, please, Advocate Amin, just start. Aisha, um, sorry, before I go on to the next slide, we um, generally, these sessions occur till 5 p.m. However, if you and Matilo are happy with the fact of continuing, we, we, then we shall continue. To the participants, uh, we sincerely apologize, but we go, I, I deem it necessary that we do continue. Thank you for that, Aisha, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Can I have the next slide, please? The one that follows this. So this is really very important. So legal practitioners, and, and also I'm aware that you know, the public may have access to this content. So I welcome that because the public must know what the parameters are for legal practitioners. Legal practitioners 
are finally disciplined by the courts. So even though we, we go through processes, the court is the only one that can say that you are not fit and proper and must be removed or struck. Now, why do I impress this upon you? Because we've now had the foundation of the impermissible conduct. You cannot discriminate. You cannot have sexual harassment. Section three, you must advance, promote. You must have the constitution in your mind. You must know. You must support the constitution. That was section three. And section six was how you should not permeate discrimination against anybody as a legal practitioner. Now, now yes, other professions will have their own, um, the, there would be the Labor Relations Act, the, the uh, Employment Equity Act, there are differences, there's the PAPUDA. So there's many other laws for other environments. So I'm really speaking to legal practitioners. And legal practitioners, I, I submit that if you permeate conduct that is not in line with the constitutional values, if you permit discriminatory conduct, and if you don't stop or assist, or if you are harassing and sexually exploiting junior after junior or colleague after colleague, and that conduct is then after an inquiry placed before a court, the court will then assess your conduct, not beyond reasonable doubt, like a criminal court. It will assess your conduct on a balance of probabilities. Did that conduct that is now to be assessed, that discriminatory conduct, that sexism, that racism, was it committed on a balance of probabilities? Thereafter, what's very special is that the, the two judges will preside and it will be a value judgment on whether you are, we are fit and proper. And thereafter, they will sanction, prescribe the sanction. So the courts hold the final say. And what I can say to you, it is my, my submission that I... I submit that if that heinous conduct is, in, as we've read out in section six, is perpetrated against the public, against our fellow con colleagues, then we must know that that conduct, if it's before a court of law, may, may, may draw the harshest of sanction. And I would say that that person is not fit and proper to practice. Because think about this constitution. If you look at the foundation of the constitution, the constitution is transformative. It is a living document. It is taking us to where we need to be. It's taking us to where we, we, we are all actualized with dignity, equality, and freedom. And if we you, you may remove the slide and you may focus on me if that's what you wish. Otherwise, you may leave the slide. If you are perpetrating this heinous conduct, it is a clear that you are not upholding the values of the Constitution. It is absolutely clear that, that you are a perpetrator of oppression. So I would say that the consciousness that we have been relying upon perhaps can also be a safeguard because if, if those perpetrators are conscious of what they can lose, they may think very, very carefully and maybe want to assist and, and stop the heinous conduct and know that they will not be welcome as legal practitioners and will not be our peers and cannot speak in open court and address a judge. Because when you and I have a right of appearance and we speak in open court, we speak on behalf of a client, we, we are sworn to uphold the constitution, to, to apply the rule of law. But if we are those perpetrators of those heinous crimes, I would definitely submit that um, I don't think that we can, that perpetrator can do justice 
and can do and can represent a client and is um, it is important to know that when the court sits on this particular issue it will be there to protect the public so it it is there to protect the public and i would like to then say that what i we can reach the end slide i if you like or, or the, the next slide i think there was the one after that so what we've done is that look i invite everybody to to formulate solutions we are all open to ideation what we've done with several and what our solutions are is we are consciousness movement so we conscientize and then what we have is we have programs so we have programs where legal practitioners experts those with skills work with aspiring uh, lawyers or, or qualified lawyers so there's there's a circular motion of skill development and as much as we we develop the next generation we also learn from the younger generation because they are perhaps freer they were perhaps born with more with with they were born in a different generation where uh the constitution was um already in place so we some of us may not have been born at, at those particular times so what i'm saying is the learning is a two-way street so we have clear defined programs and we welcome legal practitioners to join assist us those legal practitioners that contribute skills into our movement become our members and our luminary members our alumni are those that successfully complete our programs and uh, we work very closely um, we know um, inaugural president madelo she's our chief operating officer but she was our very first president so um, we we work we do a lot and we we have fun so we don't um, we we also have experts that assist us. So we've worked with intellectual um, or uh, information technology, uh, forensic um, IT experts. We've worked with uh, critical uh, thinkers in different fields. So we work with other skills and we take it back and, and we're really about education because we believe uh, that, you know, we, we infuse Ubuntu and Zenzele in what we do and we, we are upskilling all the time. So we are upskilling in, and, and remember now, we work on consciousness equals opportunities with a capital S, 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 equals dignity, equality, and freedoms. And we try and, and have that environment where, you know, if, if we make mistakes, it's not that you, you, you're the worst of the lot and you're inhuman and you, you have no dignity and get out. We expect that this this must happen to become an expert to become better and then we attempt to define that and critique it uh, with humanity um and we are also human so we make mistakes and i think because we've got so much ubuntu and zenzele in everything that we do it's just worked for us so i'm not prescribing this for everybody it may not work for everybody but it's it's my family it's my home it's where i feel that I can have the fullest expression. That is where I feel that there are no ceilings. Uh, we I, we can grow. There are just it's it's it, there's no ceiling. So in other structures that are historical, it is just structures that are created for the advancement of a particular group. And the minute you want to rattle that structure, you are not welcome. Or you it, it's just not made to. To, so that I can have an authentic voice. So I am very happy about the Legal Practice Act. Um, I support Saba and many of the others. And um, what I want to say is what I did is if you'd like, there's not enough time to talk about everything, but I, I have focused on, you know, the elements that constitute my own individual Mbukodo and I've captured that in several Mbukodo collection of consciousness. If you move to the very last slide, 
um, or one of the slides, you will you will have the link. So the perhaps the the, the slide before, but in other words, it's on sable.com. So it's published because our COO has said that we should make it freely available. It was written for several alumni, but if anybody wants to read a little bit more about what I'm saying, you are most welcome. The inspiration for me to write that, it's not long, it's a, little, it's a short little collection, was Limpopo students um, came up to me after I presented at the University of Limpopo for the BLASC, the BLA student structures, and they asked me, have I written anything? So I said no. So then I actually wrote that thinking that, you know, if any of those students would like to read it, then I can say, please read that. So we are all doing the best that we can. Watent Abafazi, Watent Mbokodo. I look forward to, to questions. And I would say that consciousness, Solomon Mashlangu, that is consciousness. And more than one opportunity. And I've also in my, my little note, I've called for us to take the purpose of test in uh, constitutional interpretation one step further, because when you can't interpret the constitution, you interpret it purposive, purposively. I've said, take it purposively to the respected human, the same way in DELECT, you have the reasonable person test. I, I would call, uh, my wish is that in constitutional interpretation, you have the respected human test. So that is really what my submissions are. I look forward to, to questions, but I think Solomon Mashlango has really given us the answer on what to do with anything that, that brings us pain. Malibongwe, Gamala Makosi cousin, Malibongwe. Asha and um, Madilo, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that brilliant address. Uh, I would honestly ap applaud and the audience would do it too. The, by, by, by the South African Bar Association indeed thanks you and we do stand in solidarity. On that note, it leaves me with this with the final of saying that thank you to all the participants for being part of this. And we look forward to next week's session, which is by Judge Pre President Malem Malambo. So we, we look forward to hearing to you guys next week. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you, my thank you, Matilo. Thank you. Thank you, Amen. Thank you. 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 Thank you.